in this video, we're going to continue talking about discrete random variables. So random variables are variables that are random, and what they do is assign a number to an outcome. So for example, say you have a coin and you flip it three times and you're recording the number of heads that you get. If you see heads, tails, heads, then your random variable x would be equal to two. All right, so we said that there are two types of random variables. We have discrete random variables and continuous random variables. We said that a discrete random variable takes on either finite or countably infinite many values. So we covered two discrete random variables so far, the binomial and the hypergeometric. So remember, a binomial random variable is the number of successes in n independent identical trials, each with a binary outcome. And then we have the hypergeometric, which is similar to a binomial, but we are sampling without replacement. So in other words, they're not going to be independent and identical. All right, so now we're going to have a new definition, which is discrete probability function. So suppose S is a finite or countably infinite sample space. We're going to have little p be a real valued function defined for all elements in our sample space, such that the probability of any element, or in other words, p of s, is greater than or equal to zero for any element in our sample space. And if we take the sum of all the probabilities, we get one. So if these two things hold, then p is a discrete probability function. All right, so one thing to note, um, if you have an event A, and it's made up of a couple different elements in your sample space, then you can calculate the probability of that event by taking the probability of each element and summing them up. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. In our first example here, we have a four-sided die, and it's a fair four-sided die. So that means that it's equally likely to land on one, two, three, and four. So since it's fair and there are four sides, then that means that the probability of getting a one is a quarter, the probability of two is getting a quarter, same with three, same with four. And of course, one quarter is greater than or equal to zero. So I point that out because um, we're going to want to check if this is a legit probability function, and one piece of that is making sure that all of these probabilities are greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's look at the event A that we roll an even. So there's two ways to roll an even. We could roll a two, or we could roll a four, of course. So the probability of rolling an even is equal to the probability of rolling a two plus the probability of rolling a four. So we have a quarter plus a quarter, which is a half. Okay, so now let's check to make sure that this is a legit probability function. So we already checked to make sure that P of S is greater than or equal to zero for every S in our sample space. So um, just to be clear, what does our sample space look like? We could get a one, two, three, or a four. Okay, so we already checked this. All of the probabilities are greater than or equal to zero. Now we need to make sure that the sum equals one. So a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter is equal to one, and so the probability of all the S's um, summed up is equal to one. All right, so that's one example. Let's talk about another example. Um, you have Maya Moore, who is a uh, basketball player for the Minnesota Lynx, and we're going to let X be the number of shots that she needs to make her first free throw. So what are different things that could happen? She could go and make her very first three free throw, which would mean that X would be equal to one, or she could shoot, miss, and then shoot and make the second one, which would mean that x would be equal to two, or she could miss, miss, make it, x would be equal to three, and so on. So we see that definitely s is countably infinite um, because there's no upper bound to the number of shots that would be necessary. Okay, so we have our sample space here. Let's think about is p of s a legit probability function? So. Um, let's pull in a little bit of real-world information. So real-world information, her um, career probability of success is 86%. So in other words, she makes 86% of her free throws. So what does that mean? Well, if we assume that each throw is independent, then the probability of her making her first one is 0.86.
the probability of um, missing on the first and then making it on the second would be the probability of missing on the first times the probability of making it on the second because the first and second shot are independent. Similarly, probability of making it on the third would be the probability of missing on the first, the probability of missing on the second, and then the probability of making it on the third shot. And then now we're starting to get the pattern, and so we can write this gen generally for any S from one, two, three, all the way up. And the probability of S is going to be the probability of failing, so in other words, 0.14, to the S minus one times 0.86, the probability of succeeding. Okay, so we want to check if this is a legit probability function. First thing we need to make sure is all of these probabilities are greater than or equal to zero. So if we look at this, no matter what S we plug in, going from one, two, three, four, all the way up, this P of S is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So that is checked. Now we can next make sure that the sum of P of S from S equals one to infinity is going to equal one. So let's just in here write what P of S is. So we said P of S, it's right here, so let's just recopy that down. We have 0.14 to the S minus one, and then 0.86, and S is going from one to infinity. So since this 0.86 here doesn't have any S's in it, and the sum is indexing over S, we can go ahead and pull that 0.86 out into the front. So we have 0.86 times now we have a sum from s equals one to infinity, 0.14 to the s minus one. Now if you remember things from uh, maybe calc two or maybe calc one, then um, you learned about geometric series. So this is looking pretty similar to a geometric series and if we change things so that the sum starts at zero rather than one, then this looks like a geometric series. So now our sum is rewritten as 0.86 times the sum from s equals zero to infinity, 0.14 to the S. Okay, so that's a geometric series, and since 0.14 is um, less than one, then this sum is finite, and it's going to equal, so this sum is going to equal one over one minus 0.14. And remember, we still have the 0.86 out in front, so that means that this is equal to 0.86 times one over one minus 0.14. Okay, so let's rewrite this denominator. One minus 0.14 is 0.86. So we have 0.86 times one over 0.86, and of course that's equal to one. So that's great news because now we've shown that this sum of P of S from S equals one to infinity, or in other words, the sum of P of S for all the S's in our sample space is equal to one. And that's exactly what we needed to show in order to show that P of S is a legit probability function. So that's great. This is a legit probability function, and later we'll see that X, the number of um, times you have to try in order to get a success, is going to have what's called a geometric distribution. And that comes from the fact that um, its sum is based on the geometric series.